thanks for staying with us. Are there certain love languages we need to understand to foster a good relationship? Do personalities matter? We have good Eresse to look at this with us. Um, he's a love scientist, researcher, psychoanalyst, therapist, matchmaker, and a helper to achieving goals. Now remember, you can join the conversation. Tweet to us at Plus TV Africa or at Way Show Africa One with the hashtag Ways, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 380 Now, thanks for joining us. Good. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, where do we start from? <laughs> love language. I yeah. love anything relationship. See all that. She's like, all brushed up. Okay, oh, please. I'm just here to what's the... Take it away. Go on. <laughs> no, but really, love language. Um, I think it's something that a lot of people get wrong. You know, like let's start with the basics. Love language. What are they? Love languages. What are they? Well, love language is basically um, an expression for you to feel loved and, of course, give off love as well. For instance, mm -hmm. you you have a partner who says, I love you, I love you. There are certain things they, they should do often that helps you understand that, yeah, you really do love me and yeah. you think about me, I'm somewhere in your mind and I happen to be a priority to you. So the love language helps us to understand where we are in one's life and, of mm -hmm. course, how we also give love off. Right. Okay. So what are these, like, what are as Nigerian, because we know that the general <laughs> love language does not apply. If you give me flour, I give it back to you. <laughs> give me the money. Yeah. So what, as Nigerians, what are the major love languages we notice amongst us? Well, I, I wouldn't say uh, there is a specific love language for Nigerians. Mm -hmm. I just feel like people haven't really spent time to understand themselves. Okay. And because of that, we feel like this is our love language. And because of that issue on ground, we are not getting that satisfaction. Mm -hmm. For instance, I was having a conversation with a lady once and I was like, what if I give you a flower and what if I give you the same price or the cost of the flower, the amount of I used to buy the flower? And she's like, money is not a bad idea, but do you know what it feels like to get a flower or something? So we haven't really gotten to that level to, mm -hmm. you know, have these things and get to know what it feels like basically before we say yes this is our love language and this is not so there are tests you can run to basically tell what your love language is where can we access uh, this test because i need to know five love languages.com five love yes. languages.com yes. okay okay so in africa yeah <laughs> <laughs> do you think that we are we are truly romantic people or we are just trying so hard to ad um, adopt a right. foreign kind of um, um, showing of love. Do you think so? Yes, of course. We are very romantic people. We just express our um, romance in different forms and all that. And if you happen to watch the back um, the movies back in the days when the eastern guys were guys with under the sing, flower tree you know but that those were yeah. things no but guess what those it were happened. things that they picked from indian Western. movies no it happened in the villages it yes. happened and these were things they tried to make us understand that this is real love and it had nothing to do with money it had nothing to do with good looks it was just words of affirmations it was just praises and he was just a young man who was hard working and he could sing songs and he could say, say nice things to my ears. And I, I always find him at the back, uh, under the tree. So yeah, definitely <laughs> he was there. Honestly, okay. So, <laughs> so, um, so yes, you know, people have problems in their relationships and there's this aspect of, you know, family being a cause in the reason why people have you know conflict and i'd just like to know what from your experience and the cases that you've dealt with like what what does the family do to you know bring conflict in relationships okay that's to if you want to knock down or uh, knock off conflict or how the conflicts come in yes okay conflict we don't have um there is no specific way or we don't plan for conflict when we don't have timetable when they will come but i think that first of all when people are dealing with conflict there are three elements or three well uh, how do i put it now there are three things involved factors, factors okay. involved or, or um, elements or whatever it is one is the person experiencing it and the other person is the person giving off. And the third person who we don't look at is the conflict itself. 
So when we have conflict, we are looking at our partner as an object, our enemies. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we are constantly fighting our partner without looking at the conflict itself as a problem. Yeah. So oftentimes, we are just dealing with our partners and not the, the problem conflict. itself. It's so problem. when we have this mindset, we'll be able to tackle problems and understand that this is a distraction to us. How do we solve this problem? But around here, we are looking at our partners like, okay, you are my problem, I need to deal with you. You made me feel this way, you made mm -hmm. me feel that way. So therefore, we want to make our partners feel that way too, yeah. without dealing with the problem, which is the third party. Yeah. Problems, conflict, whatever it is, it's third mm -hmm. party. Because I often feel that, I think if more couples would realize that it's two of us against this problem, mm -hmm. we would have less, less conflict. Mm -hmm. But let me talk about horoscopes. Okay. Now, a lot of people will tell you, oh, I'm Scorpio and you're Libra, so we can go together. I'm Scorpio, you're Cancer, we are too intense, we're too dramatic. Does that really affect, like, does horoscope affect who you are in relationships or who you date? Now, your personality just helps you to understand who this person is. Mm -hmm. And when they say who this person is, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be with that person. It means that you what you should expect. And of course, the advantages and disadvantages of dealing with this person. But when we look at these things, we are looking at the difficult side of it, the disadvantages of these things. And then we are saying, you know what, no, I don't want to deal with you. You have so much issues. You are too stubborn, you know, hot-headed. You don't keep calm, you know. We are looking at this negative part. But at the same time, this person has some great personalities and mm -hmm. values that you can also achieve. And if we keep looking at these things, we may not find someone that we should be with. So okay. that's a problem itself that we need to address and begin to look at the positive things. There's always a list that you have to make of mm -hmm. what are the qualities that I'm looking for in a person. When you start to make those lists and check them out and mm -hmm. see, okay, this is what I want, this is what I want, and then you look at the disadvantages too and say you check them out and you can have a better, a better evaluation see if this person wants to be with me or not. Okay, okay. so um, recently on, um, on, I think it was on Instagram, we saw a young lady bleeding um, through her mouth and the story was she just got um, dumped by her boyfriend oh. and that she had taken the, Sniper. what's it called, yeah. And you know, so she was, you know, like yeah. te te technically bleeding and nobody wanted to take her to the hospital and people were upset with her. What kind of rubbish is that? She's a stupid girl, why would she do that? You know, in your opinion, what do you think always, you know, gets us to that level where we are unable to rationally behave, especially when there is conflict in a relationship. Yeah, what do you think is the main reason? Well, for if you're leading to that story, I would say that when there is a heartbreak, people react differently. And whenever there's a loss, you feel some kind of I don't want to use the word inferiority complex. Mm. And at the same time, there's a little conf um, complex issue a place in where you have a loss. I'm not satisfied. I can't deal with this anymore. I can't function without this person. I invested so much. I'm going to be, you know, disappointment. And this can lead us to all kinds of behaviors. Have you had cases like that? Of course, yes. So we how have, did you resolve We have, that? we have. And it's a gradual process. We have to talk you through it. And of course, understand why you behave this way. What kind of investment did you put in that relationship? How long did you guys see? What were you suffering from? What kind of relationship did you have before that time? Who is this guy? Where did you meet him? And have you had cases <laughs> where they actually moved on? Yeah, to yes. Doing yes, better, yes, better of course. Things. It's just time. And if you are willing to and you know, trust your therapist and you say, okay, I need your help. I'm losing my mind. Okay, let's go ahead and let's see what we can do about this. It's a process, not you know. Okay, so I want to take you back to what you had said earlier on, go ahead. you know, about making lists in terms of okay, who you want to be with and you know, look at the good, what you're looking out for, and the things, you know. So tell me, where is the place of compromise in a relationship? Because, oh. yeah, because I, I think, personally, I feel you cannot have it all, you know. So what, where is the place of compromise? Where do you think you should be, at least, 
if he has this one in so because young people you know <laughs> why <laughs> why <laughs> they want it you know because you were you were giving people tension yeah uh -huh. wow. people want to they want a perfect and i i look at it i'm married now how, how many years this year will be my 14th year in marriage it can never be perfect but there are so many things that you can do so what, where is that place of compromise someone said compromise <laughs> doesn't give us a full satisfaction in relationship really ah. yes and and so the person said that don't subscribe for compromise however i feel like compromise also helps to navigate from one level to another until you begin to welcome what you want and it's important to us that we know exactly what we want first of all and if you must compromise you shouldn't compromise way below your own value and expectation on love or relationship mm -hmm. for instance this is what you're looking for and they say compromise because of pressure or whatever things that people are giving off to you and you feel like well, you know what um, let me just compromise and go for anyone that is available and then you're dropping your standard to this very 50 percent lower compromise should be at least 70 percent between 70 to at least it's still close to what you want but oftentimes because of we are compromising we are even dropping lower than 50 percent wow. okay yes. i get you now yeah. yeah so we are not having that satisfaction that fulfillment that we are in love we're in a relationship we're just compromising and this can lead to some kind of dissatisfaction and of course within the period of time you might get depressed and it should be from both parties yeah. not just one person always yeah. compromising I, yeah. I i totally feel that people in relationships should be more conscious consciousness what i mean is being intentional your givings what you do for instance i'm supposed to look at you like i want you to be happy i will do what needs to be be done for you to have that full fulfillment and say that yes i'm 100 percent satisfied or 90 percent satisfied on love and tomorrow you give me back we serve each other but whereby we are you know drawing out 50 percent 30 percent and all that we are st still struggling with some kind of depth or or issues inside of us that has not given us that fulfillment and depression comes in and we hmm. can't even talk about okay now things. tell me that's because you brought us there <laughs> you know when somebody constantly makes you feel so sad so bad and you've been in that relationship you've dedicated time you know what do you do first of do all you just walk away First of all, you need to talk about it with a person. With who? The person? Yes. What if you've been talking about it and the person you're seems responding. not to understand? And then find out why they are acting that way. You may be a contribution. Let's not rule that out. And have a personal evaluation. Would you date yourself? Wow. Skills, yeah. That's deep Would you date yourself? And if you were this man, understand where he's coming from, first of all. And understand why he's behaving this way. Has it always been this way? Ask questions in his past relationships and all that. Then this will help you understand who he is. But whereby it's a, a relationship whereby you feel like this person is not trying to make amends or improve himself, or you feel like, you know, happiness is very important. Yeah. And someone said that um, single people are happier than most married people. And I would say your happiness is your choice. And whatever it is that you have to get to be happy, you should choose that. Okay. You know, um, um, what was it you said again? Oh my goodness, I can't remember, so I'll just go straight to, <laughs> straight to my question. Um, you've been talking about for people in relationships. Now let's bring it back to people who are not in relationships and are still going through the whole, whether speed dating or just flirting or whatsoever it is exactly the, the dating sites or whatsoever <laughs> how do you know that you're ready to date that's one and what is the biggest misconception people have about starting a relationship hmm. um, people have this mindset on relationship that once I meet someone I will be loved again mm -hmm. and first of all the whole misconception about uh, relationships should be reversed. You shouldn't date when you feel like you need someone. Okay. okay. You should date when you feel like you should contribute to someone. You are an awesome person. You have gotten to that level of being a god, a mini god. Fantastic. Where you I look at that. yourself and then you crave yourself. 
and you feel like I am a blessing, I should give this blessing on to another person. Mm. That's when you should date. That's where you're meant wow. to compliment that yeah. person. Exactly. Oftentimes we are so empty and we are looking for somebody else to fill us. Oh my. And that person is as empty as us coming together to empty, empty people. people. So, two unhappy people. So when you do not have any substance in yourself, it's not the right time for you to date someone. Wow. Just be on your own. Gain yourself. Understand who you are. Hmm. When you can add value to one's life, that's when you should date. Awesome. There's a huge misconception there. When people feel so empty, if I had a boyfriend, if I had a girlfriend, I feel like I would have that strong fulfillment that I've arrived as a person. Mm -hmm. There's something, there's a void in my life that I need to fill. No, don't try it. Okay, you heard it. Beautiful. Our guest. Yeah. <laughs> don't you dare try it. When you are empty, that's not the right time to date. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. On that powerful note, we'll release you. <laughs> Thank you so much. So Tosin Sunny joins us right after this break. Please stay with us.